Hi, this is Amy from Be Well Clinic, and I'm here with Jen in her beautiful biodynamic backyard garden. <laughs> We're here to talk about her bees, um, which are part of her uh, sustainable and um, biodynamic culture that's back here. And I just have some questions for her. So, Jen, thanks for talking to us about bees. Yeah, I'm happy what to got be here. You, what got you into beekeeping? So my husband and I for years have had a dream of um, just kind of our own sustainable little farm and we tried it on a bigger farm when our kids were little and it was um, just too much to handle with his career and the kids activities and, and all that so we moved into suburbia and switched our um, vision to what can we do on a regular suburban size lot mm -hmm. and still have a farm so uh -huh. yeah yeah which the little bit i'm doing on my lot it's mm -hmm. crazy how much yeah. you can put yeah. into a tiny yard yes that we would think is a small yard yeah. growing up yeah and i've got a huge garden in my yeah used to be grass very so. true very Thanks. true we try to utilize all the space we have and both functionality and beauty yeah. so so where do bees fit in so i guess when i pictured my garden I just never saw it without mm -hmm. bees it's something that I always thought was certainly intriguing um, always you know a couple times I had seen other people's beehives and I just thought they were beautiful um, but it's intimidating when you don't know what you're doing so yeah. uh, last year was my first year and I had one hive okay. I had taken a class with uh, northern Colorado beekeepers mm -hmm. and it was definitely informative but it was intimidating yeah. to go from nothing to all of that information yeah. yeah they love what they do for sure um so last year i through a random connection was introduced to a master beekeeper in loveland and um, he's ended up ended up becoming a pretty good friend of mine but he mentored me all last year in starting up my hive i got a little hive kit if you will at costco oh wow <laughs> yeah yeah cool. it's amazing what you can find there isn't it so um yeah and he just walked me through it all summer long and kind of pushed me to build my confidence a little bit and this year i'm still in touch with him regularly but i'm doing it on my own and he continues to push me yes. to to gain confidence at that so yeah so you have two hives now, I see. I do have two hives now. And so, yeah. what kind of bees do you have? Can you just get any bees yeah. or how yeah. do you? So I, bees? there's new, there's several different ways you can do it. Lots of people like to just um, capture a swarm, mm -hmm. but that's, you know, there's a bit of luck involved with mm -hmm. that, that you'll be at the right place at the right time. So um, you can get a kit, like I said, with all of the parts to it. And then you can order a queen and or what's called a nook and a nook will have the queen and some worker bees that will and you just put it into your okay. into your hive and that's probably the easiest way to start um you know if you can catch a swarm it's free so right right <laughs> yeah um, yeah great. What, so, what did you get i know there's different yeah. types of them yeah i got italian queens okay. because i was told that they're more gentle for mm -hmm. backyards yeah. so is helpful yeah yeah you have them right here yes yes i have only been stung once in my okay. two summers so far so okay. and that was kind of my fault so right it always is right? yeah right <laughs> <laughs> nice um so what is your favorite part about mm. having the bees i think i have been um very surprised at how entertaining they are so oh, cool. um they are definitely wild animals, so mm -hmm. I don't consider them my bees, but okay. I take care of a nice home for them. Okay. I make them want to be here. A um, I really enjoy watching their habits. I did not realize how much habits they have, just like your chickens or mm -hmm. you know other things. But they, in the afternoons, in the late afternoons before they come in and go to bed, mm -hmm. Um, they'll do what's called an orientation flight and it looks like they are going crazy around your hive but if you watch them they're doing a pattern and they're actually teaching their younger bees that are moving up in the ranks to be mm -hmm. forager bees they're teaching them the geography of the area and the dances and it lasts about 15 minutes where you see a cloud oh. of bees around your hive and it's beautiful you know and it's so cool it only takes a couple minutes of 
watching the hive and you can see their flight patterns and you know the coming and going and you can watch them defend off a yellow jacket yeah. and they're very um predictable once you start so watching you get, them you get oriented just like a young yes bee. yes <laughs> you yes know the patterns you. that is so cool i did yeah. not know that yeah yeah there's a there's a lot you learn and as you watch them so that is so cool yeah great so Working on a third hive, maybe. Um, maybe. We'll see. We'll see how much honey I get this year. <laughs> right. So that's my next question is, how's the honey? Do you yeah. Did you get honey your first year? Yes. Or? Last year was a bumper year for wow. bees and pretty much all the agriculture okay. around this city. Um, so it was a good year to start last year. Um, I'm noticing it's not quite as busy this year, but last year I ended up with probably almost six gallons of honey from wow. one new hive. And I was told if your hive survives the winter, that was a successful year. So Same. honey is secondary, you know, right. <laughs> so, right. so we wow. did, but I'm, I'm, I think I'll end up with a, you know, few gallons this year. So that's great. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Good. Um, and then I know a little bit about, so you, you separate the queen so she doesn't lay eggs where mm -hmm. the honey is getting collected, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, you can do that. You don't really have to. Okay. Um, she naturally will stay in the okay. lower boxes. Um, okay. So I haven't put my queen separator on, even though I have one, but okay. haven't really so needed not it. you've had it. It's yeah. been separate. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Great. Mm -hmm. Very good. And mm -hmm. then your bees have not like felt like you've stolen their honey, so they're not angry at you. <laughs> well, well. <laughs> well, now, During... like they didn't remember. Yes. <laughs> well, bees only live about six weeks, so um, the queen will last, I think, roughly three or four years. Okay. Um, but the the average bee, the worker bee, only mm -hmm. lasts six weeks. Okay. So they're not going to remember you. They're not gonna... <laughs> <laughs> Next year it's fine. Good. There's that lady again. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So what do you do to winter your bees in Colorado? <clears throat> so, well, I'll be honest, my hive last year did not survive. I had to, I had to get, get two new queens this year. So um, I put, you don't have to, but I put some styrofoam insulation around the hive. I kind of built like a little box okay. and, uh, and then we had that really cold snap in January. Um, but yeah, there's, you just take your honey, leave enough for them. Mm -hmm. They need, you know, a box or two of honey to get through. Um, there's not a lot you have to do in the winter. Okay. So, yeah. yeah, and they just yeah. hibernate basically, right? And in yeah. the spring, do you feed them or do you have plants that feed them right away? I do feed them. I give them, um, you know, I just have a little mason jar with, I poke holes in the bottom of it and give them simple syrup, essentially. Okay. Um, just to get them going and then of course you want to take that once they start getting pollen because you don't want sugar water honey right so <laughs> right yes that's for you yeah yeah I want the good stuff yes exactly <laughs> very nice very cool good so uh, looking at people who maybe want to do this as part of it the mm -hmm. big question is mm -hmm. will we get stung if we have a, a beehive mm -hmm. in our backyard which you said not necessarily um yeah just I wouldn't go into it expecting that you're not going to get stung. Okay. So you're going to have to be okay with the idea of getting stung. So a, an allergy <laughs> to bee stings, maybe yeah. this is not. If you have a you. severe allergy, I would recommend not doing it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but um, honestly, you know, one time I was stung, and it was because I got overconfident and I didn't take the precautions that I was yeah. supposed to. And um, but they're really they're they're pretty easy. Yeah. They're very gentle, so yes. I wouldn't worry about it too much. And yeah, it's it's yeah. pretty easy. I would get a mentor. Yeah, I think if you okay. know somebody that can mentor you, it is it it goes a long way. So that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. You can only read so yeah. much on the internet, and right. it's not necessarily going to yeah. be right. Yes, or and for your area, it's a lot easier when you can see it and get your hands yeah. on there and actually do it. So that makes sense. Yeah, that makes so. sense. But there, are, bee people love to talk about bees. <laughs> So there's, it's there's easy a to find lot a of bee help in yeah. our northern Colorado area. So, okay. yeah. Just grow with it. Grow with mm -hmm. the bees and grow with your garden and enjoy it. And I always um, think about, you know, I can get really stirred up trying to make my garden perfect, but it's never going to be perfect. Mm -hmm. So I just like to remember that my garden is not about perfection, but it's about um, God's provision and love for me. And it just keeps growing and expanding, and and we keep learning. That's so. cool. There's such a talk about um, 
being like bees dying because mm-hmm. of the different chemicals and pesticides mm-hmm. we're using mm-hmm. um do you feel like your bees they go around right so you yeah. can't really control yeah all yeah. of that you don't but you can at least give them some yeah you clean can't flowers <laughs> you can't make your bees organic <laughs> yeah. because they they'll go where they go i've been told they have about a five mile radius okay. and and that's because that's in years where there's not much they have to go a long ways to mm-hmm. get it but if they don't have to go a long ways, they, they would won't. prefer to stay closer. So I try to make as much as I can mm-hmm. um, available to them and organic. Mm-hmm. And then your chances are better of them being organic. So That's good. Yeah. Do you have a lot of dandelions in your yard for those early pollinators? <laughs> Do they show up? A few. <laughs> Not a ton, but a few. But, you know, we've planted different, um, we've planted our flowers so they bloom throughout the okay. seasons. So we have peonies and forsythia and okay. um early spring flowers as mm-hmm. well as late blooming Ones right now yes yeah, yeah. so very cool yeah. that's really neat that's a lot to think through but it, it makes is. sense like it one does. step at a time one step at a time and they'll go mm-hmm. out of your gate if you don't have the right flowers they'll go exactly find exactly <laughs> yeah awesome so. well thanks for yeah. sharing and yeah, yeah we want to tour around a little bit so. sure sure very cool <laughs> great